FIFA imperialism, but it's Messi versus Ronaldo. On this map, we have some of Messi and Ronaldo's greatest ever teammates, with Messi being Team Purple and Ronaldo being Team Yellow, who are gonna battle it out until there's only one team standing. And we start things off with Messi's greatest ever teammate, Ronaldinho, facing off against Marcus Rashford from Team Ronaldo. This should be an easy win for Team Messi. And somehow, Marcus Rashford would strike first. Oh my god. Oh, you're giving Dino too much space. You can't do that to one of the most skilled players of all time. What the? What is he doing? Okay. Surprisingly, Team Ronaldo and Rashford kept on fighting with both sides scoring goals. And eventually, Ronaldinho found himself with the ball with only 30 seconds left. And the score tied 7-7. Oh my god. Oh, he's down. He's on the ground. He's on the ground. Dino, don't mess this up, Dino. Don't... Oh my god, Dino may have thrown. Dino may have just thrown. Dino got spun. Dino got spun by Marcus Rashford. What did I just see? And just like that, the first match of FIFA Imperialism would end with a huge upset. Ronaldinho has lost to Marcus Rashford in the very first match. And the way to win this Imperialism is that if someone on the other team beats Messi or Ronaldo, it's game over. So now that Rashford is bordering Messi's territory, he has the chance to fight Messi. And if he beats him, Marcus Rashford would win the game for Ronaldo making Ronaldo the official GOAT. This isn't looking good for Team Messi. For that to happen, Rashford would have to get picked on the wheel again, but this time around, it looks like a different legend is gonna step up. Kaka, one of Ronaldo's best players. And it looks like he's facing Usman Dembele from Team Messi. Can Dembele do what Rashford did and kill a legend? I don't think Kaka was taking this that seriously because he was really showing off. Okay, okay, they keep pump faking me, bro. Why do they keep doing that? That's so weird. And he kept on messing around, leading Usman Dembele to tie the game. Okay, and just like that, we are tied. However, after that, Kaka really focused up, taking a 7-5 lead with only a minute left to go. It looked like Team Ronaldo had this one in the bag. Okay, okay, we might have a game on our hands. And it seems like Team Messi was paying the goalkeeper because how do you explain this? My nan, my nan is so sus, bro. He's the imposter. He's the imposter. Get him, boys. And with only seven seconds left, Dembele had a chance to win the game. Nine, eight, seven, six, five. Oh. Usman Dembele! How, how do you let Messi down? Again! And after Dembele absolutely sold Messi, we went into Golden Goal where Kaka made him pay. What did I just witness? What? And he's dancing. And he's dancing. And just like that, Team Ronaldo takes even more land from Team Messi. The only chance I see of Messi actually making a comeback is if he can somehow get Dybala or Di Maria. That's his only chance. That's because Di Maria and Dybala have played with both Messi and Ronaldo. So whichever team can beat those two players will be able to add them to their team. But first, Marcus Rashford is going once again and beating Ronaldinho wasn't enough because this time he's going after Neymar. And now he wants more. This guy's a savage. As we started the game, Rashford didn't waste any time and he showed the world why he beat Ronaldinho. This is crazy. Is Marcus Rashford gonna take the lead? Don't tell me Marcus Rashford. No, no celebration. No celebration. He's about his business. He skipped the celebration. Rashford may have had the lead, but there was no way that Neymar was gonna give up, and he kept on trying. Five. Can we get a buzzer beater here? Four, three, two, one. Yes! Okay, he ties it. That's the buzzer beater, bro. That's the buzzer beater right before half. That's perfect, man. As the second half started, both players were determined to win this, and they both went on to score two goals each, leading us to be tied with less than 15 seconds to go. Oh, oh, can you get a buzzer beater? Five, four, three. Buzzer beater. He beat the buzzer. Oh my God. Marcus Rashford's done it again. With less than three seconds to go, it was looking impossible for Neymar. You have to turn and shoot. You have to turn and shoot. No, that's it. That's it! That's it! Marcus Rashford's done it again! And just like that, Rashford has beaten another Brazilian and taken more land, and he's almost completely surrounded Messi. Marcus Rashford is the GOAT. You hear it here first, man. He is the GOAT. Like, how does Messi come back from this? Messi really needs a big win, and Samuel Eto'o is going next, facing off against Wayne Rooney. Can Messi finally win a game? 
Okay, we have a showdown of two legends, Samuel Eto versus Wayne Rooney. And Eto seemed hungry for revenge because he instantly scored two goals to take the lead against Rooney. Why would you power shot that? I mean, it went in, but that is so extra, Samuel Eto. I don't know what Eto ate for breakfast that morning because he went completely off, scoring three more goals, winning the match for Messi. Samuel Eto makes light work of Wayne Rooney and he finally wins some land for Messi, bro. This is what Messi was been missing. This is what Messi deserves. However, Ronaldo still has the advantage because as we can see from the map, Ronaldo has no one from Team Messi near him, but Messi has players from Team Ronaldo all around him. But that's about to change because Yaya Turi is going next and he's going after Marcus Rashford to get revenge for Team Messi. Yaya Toure is sliding for Messi, bro. And that's exactly what Yaya did because he would instantly take the lead. Power on it. Please, please just finish it like a man. Come on, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, Yaya. But Yaya's goalkeeper wasn't on the same page. Are you... Oh my god. Oh my god. I've seen it all. I have seen it all. But Yaya Toure and Marcus Rashford would have a legendary battle that would end up with the game being tied 6-6 with less than a minute left to go. Yaya Toure might be the better player, but I don't know if Yaya has the experience needed. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. Yaya Toure literally spit in my face right now, but I love it. Onana, 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 don't sell this. Oh my God, oh my God, that's it, that's it. That's a two goal lead. No chance. That has to be it. That has to be it. Did Yaya Toure just save Messi's whole career? Rashford would get one goal back, but it wasn't enough as Yaya Toure still got the win and won back all that land for Team Messi, which really helped even the battlefield. Yaya Toure literally set up the Great Wall of China around Messi. But don't go anywhere because we still have amazing players like Mbappe, Benzema, Modric, and much more coming up next. But first, we have to spin the wheel to see who goes next. Okay, this is one of the joke players I added, but let's see if Harry Maguire can pull off some magic. And it looks like Harry Maguire is heading northeast to face off against Antoine Griezmann. If somehow Harry Maguire beats Antoine Griezmann, do you know how much land Ronaldo's gonna have? And instantly, Harry Maguire would use his forehead to get the lead. Oh my god. He just hit him with his forehead. That's not even fair. That's like, that's assault, bro. That's illegal in 15 countries. Throw him up. Throw him in jail. Griezmann and Harry Maguire would go back and forth for a little bit, but in the end, it was Griezmann who was leading with about two minutes left to play. Finish it. Finish it, Griezmann. Easy finish. Easy finish. Okay. 6-5. Griezmann has taken the lead. For a second there, I thought it was over and Griezmann would win, but Harry Maguire had different plans. Wow, okay, it's a tie game, 6-6. Six, six. Harry Maguire has tied it. And with less than a minute left to go, FIFA Imperialism history was made. 30, 32 seconds, is he gonna take the lead here? Oh my God, Harry Maguire's taking the lead. Harry Maguire has taken the lead. I put this guy in here as a joke. I didn't think he'd beat someone. You're joking me, man. This is a joke. Am I, am I dreaming? Pinch, pinch, ow. That hurt. Clearly, I'm not dreaming. This is a nightmare. And just like that, Ronaldo takes even more land from Messi. Ronaldo has completely taken the south. And to make things even better, we had a familiar face going up next. He's not done. He's back for more. And it looks like he's going to be facing off against Di Maria, which means that if Di Maria wins, he will join Team Messi and take Harry Maguire's land. But if Harry Maguire wins, then Di Maria will join Team Ronaldo and become a yellow player. So this could be a huge turning point for Team Messi. And Harry Maguire would get a huge chance to start the game. Oh, oh, oh my God. Harry Maguire just had better the goalie again. That should be illegal, man. <laughs> He may have missed, but the next time he got the opportunity, Harry Maguire was not messing around. Oh my god, is he gonna- Okay, is he gonna finish this time? He might score it this time. Dude, he hit that thing from Kansas. That was such a long shot. Di Maria would tie the game, but Harry Maguire would once again take the lead just minutes later, and with less than a minute left to go, it was up to Di Maria to save Messi's legacy. What? Wow! Wow, okay, I have no words. I have no words except wow. Interesting. 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 Very, very interesting. Okay. Okay. I thought he's going to hit the post for a second. With the game tied, we went into a golden goal where it was up to Harry Maguire or Di Maria to take the win. 
There it is! Di Maria wins it for Team Messi. That is huge. That is exactly what Messi needed. And truthfully, I'm just happy that someone beat Harry Maguire, man. I do not like that guy. As Di Maria joins Team Messi and takes Harry Maguire's land, it's looking more and more like Team Messi is now in the lead. And it looks like Benzema is going to be going next, and he takes on his ex-teammate Di Maria to try and get revenge for Harry Maguire. This is going to be a good game. And as expected, the Ballon d'Or winner Benzema would put the moves on Di Maria to take the early lead. Yeah, Benzema, at the end of the day, Benzema is a Ballon d'Or winner. I, I think he takes this one quite easily. And it turns out that I was right because Benzema would go on to score again, again, and again to thoroughly beat Di Maria and demolish Team Messi's hopes. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 done. It's wraps. And with that loss, Kareem Benzema would take back all the land that Harry Maguire lost to give complete control of the South to Cristiano Ronaldo. And I put these arrows on the map to make it more obvious on who owns what land. But next, we have perhaps the most important game of the whole tournament because Yaya Toure is going to be taking on Kareem Benzema. And if Yaya Toure loses, Messi will have no protection except for Mbappe. He will be nearly surrounded. If Yaya loses here, it might be over for Team Messi. As the game started, we all know how high the stakes are for both teams, but Yaya Toure would rise to the occasion and go beast mode. Yaya Toure, bang. That's it, Yaya Toure takes the lead on Benzema, but he wasn't done there because Yaya Toure would go on to score not one, not two, but five more goals to destroy Benzema and win the match for Team Messi. Oh my God. Oh my god, what a finish. If we look at the map now, everything has changed and it now seems that Team Messi is in the lead. But there's still some amazing players left on the map like Mbappe, Luka Modric, and Luis Figo who are yet to play. And it looks like Paul Scholes is gonna be going next, attacking Yaya Toure to try and take back all that land for Team Ronaldo. But as the game started, just like before, Yaya Toure wasn't holding anything back. Oh my god, oh my god, Yaya Toure is on a mission though. But Yaya Toure shouldn't have underestimated Paul Scholes because before we knew it, Scholes scored two goals and took the lead for Team Ronaldo. Yeah, Scholes does not mess around and he's taking the lead. Oh my god. However, Yaya Toure wasn't going to give up that easy and he would score one more goal to tie the game and then Scholes and Yaya would proceed to go back and forth until the game was tied at 7-7 and at this point, it was anyone's game to win. Oh my god, that was the point. Oh my days. Oh my days. Oh, I thought he was going to miss, but he scored. Paul Scholes just scored a chip shot to maybe win the game. Scolzi now had the lead, but he wasn't done just there. If he shoots this, Yaya has a chance. Oh my days, never mind. Never mind! And with that victory, Paul Scholes takes all of Yaya Toure's land and puts Team Ronaldo in the lead once again. But next, it looks like Thierry Henry is trying to make a comeback for Team Messi because he's going to be facing off against Luis Figo. Alright, this is a pretty big match for Team Messi because they can take the whole right side of the map. But of course, that depends on if Thierry Henry can actually win. Just like that, Henri may have thrown away Messi's chances at winning this thing. It's not over though because Henri could still score, but he messed up his chance and it now looks like Figo will score again to take the win. But yeah, Figo doesn't miss that one. 5-3, I think this might be over for Henri. Sure enough, I was right and Figo ended up doubling his territory and taking more land from Team Messi. I mean, at this point, Mbappe and Samuel Eto are Messi's only hopes. Coming up, we're gonna see an insane matchup between two legends, but first, Coutinho is going to take on Bernardo Silva. Oh my god. Bernardo Silva and Coutinho would have a pretty fierce match, but in the end, Coutinho would edge it and send Bernardo Silva back. I have to applaud him for that. He just won Messi that game. And just like that, Coutinho gains back a bit of land for Messi. It's not much, but you know what? It's something, you know? And now it's time for one of the biggest matches yet because Samuel Eto'o is gonna take on Luis Figo. Eto'o is taking on Figo. And from these two legends, it would be Eto'o who would draw first blood from a questionable foul. Oh, oh my days, why was that a foul? I don't know, but Eto takes it. That's a one goal lead for Samuel Eto. I don't know if that destroyed Figo's confidence, but from there on out, Eto absolutely gave it to Figo. He's going all the way. Is Eto gonna make it three? Yes, he is. Three goal lead for Samuel Eto. Figo tried to fight back, but in the end, it wasn't enough, and Samuel Eto easily got the win. That is over. Figo, that was too little, too late. Samuel Eto'o takes the lead and he eliminates another one of Ronaldo's men. 
And with that win, Samuel Eto'o successfully takes the right hand side of the map for Team Messi. But Eto'o isn't done there because he's gonna go next and he's gonna fight Paulo Dybala. And remember, if he wins, Paulo Dybala will then have to join Team Messi. And that's exactly what would happen because once again, Samuel Eto'o would put on a show and absolutely demolish Paulo Dybala, meaning that Dybala now has to join Team Messi. And all of a sudden, it looks like Team Messi is once again in the lead. Paulo Dybala joins Team Messi. Team Messi is now in the lead with more players left on the board, but there's still one big problem and his name is Paul Skoll. Priority number one for Team Messi should be to take down Skolzy. Felipe Coutinho would be the next brave soul to try and take on Paul Skolzy, but as we would see, he would get destroyed by the Englishman and it was looking like Paul Skolzy could not be defeated. Skolzy is actually a monster. Paulo Dybala would go next to try and fight Paul Skulls and they even had a very close match that ended up going into golden goal but you should know by now that Paul Skulls simply doesn't lose and with that win he eliminates another one of Messi's men. And just like that team Ronaldo has once again taken the lead. No one can stop him he just keeps on taking more and more land. But it isn't over for Paul Skulls because there's still one more guy that wants to take him on. Oh Sergio Busquets I added him in here as a meme as a joke but Sergio Busquets Busquets has the chance to take down Paul Scholes. To be fair to Sergio Busquets, he put up quite the fight against Paul Scholes, but at the end of the day, there was no way that Paul Scholes was going to lose to someone with 30 pace. That's going to be it. Paul Scholes takes another one of Messi's men. And this is what the map looks like after that loss for Team Messi. Oh man, Paul Scholes is looking like an octopus out here. Look at look how many directions he's going. However, Paul Scholes isn't satisfied just yet because next he's going after Samuel Eto'o to try and take down another member of Team Messi. But unlike everyone that came before him, Samuel Eto'o would actually take the lead against Paul Scholes. It worked! What? Okay, <laughs> that's like the second time ever that a chip shot has actually worked. I'm surprised. But it did. It didn't stop there because Samuel Eto'o would go on to score three more goals to give Team Messi a four goal lead. He is not messing around. Samuel Eto'o makes it 4-0. And just like that, that was enough to dethrone Paul Scholes. And with that win, Samuel Eto'o is now the player with the most land on FIFA Imperialism and it's looking like Messi is set to win this whole thing. But of course, Ronaldo still has four teammates left where Messi only has three. So anything can still happen. And it's now time for another spin of the wheel. And it looks like Luka Modric is going to try to get revenge for Paul Scholes by taking on Samuel Eto'o. All right, there it is. Luka Modric is going northwest. But it wouldn't be the start he imagined because Samuel Eto'o would come out firing. Is he going to eliminate another one of Ronaldo's men? It looks like he's determined to do so because he takes the 1-0 lead. And just like he did to Paul Scholes, Samuel Eto'o would keep on firing and score two more goals to take the three-goal lead. And he scores off his own rebound. That's a 3-0 lead for Samuel Eto'o. Luka Modric just doesn't want it bad enough. The score was 8-6, but the result remained the same. Samuel Eto'o dominated another one of Ronaldo's men. And just like that, Samuel Eto'o casually eliminates two of the greatest midfielders of all time, just like that. After the win by Eto, both Messi and Ronaldo have three men left each, with Messi being the heavy favorite because he has so much more land. If Samuel Eto goes next, he has the ability to take on Cristiano Ronaldo right now. Sure enough, Eto is hungry for more, but this time around, he's not gonna be taking on Ronaldo. Yep, Samuel Eto is taking on Kaka. And instantly, Eto's goalkeeper would throw him under the bus and gift Kaka a free goal. Oh, Kaka, Kaka, Kaka takes the lead. That's 1 0 for Team Ronaldo. Eto would try his best to get back into the game, but he was just no match for the Brazilian. Oh, Kaka, oh, Kaka, oh, Kaka. 3-0, this is insane. And it's too bad for Team Messi because Kaka easily takes the victory and now Team Ronaldo owns almost all the land on FIFA Imperialism. Team Messi is in trouble, bro. But you can't count Messi out just yet because the little Argentinian has one more trick up his sleeve. This could be Messi's last hope because 
To be honest, I don't think Xavi is doing anything. And the Messi fans can take a sigh of relief because it looks like killing Mbappe will get the job done. Mbappe, Mbappe, killing Mbappe. He's doing it for Messi, man. He's doing it for Messi. But just moments later, Kaka would tie it up again. Can Kaka equalize? Can Kaka equalize? Yes, he can. Off the bar. That's nice, man. However, the match is still young and both players were giving it their all by scoring goals back and forth. Bang! 5-5, five, five, or should I say 2-2? Two, two. This thing's heating up, man. This thing's heating up. However, as the game went on, Kaka's experience started to show, and it was clear that Kylian Mbappe couldn't keep up, and Kaka took a four-goal lead. Oh my days. Oh my goodness. That's a four-goal lead for Kaka. However, don't count out Kylian Mbappe just yet because he would score three goals back to back to back to make the match super close, and it was looking like he would actually make the comeback. Mbappe's in. Mbappe. Go Mbappe. Go Mbappe. Seven seconds. No. Mbappe. What are you doing? Why would you shoot that so early? Oh my days. I thought Mbappe was going to make the comeback. And with that loss, Mbappe is off the board and Messi is basically defenseless. Messi is surrounded by Team Ronaldo. There's literally nothing he can do. His only hope is that Xavi somehow, some way, the Xavi beats Kaka. Kaka is going next, but luckily for Messi, the arrow is pointing towards Xavi, so it's not over just yet. I do think that is closer to Xavi now. Come on. Come on, right? And as the match between Xavi and Kaka started, it was actually looking good for Team Messi because Xavi would take the 2-0 lead. Oh my days. Come on, Xavi. Come on, Xavi. Come on, Xavi. There it is. 2-0 lead for Team Messi. But don't count out Team Ronaldo just yet because Kaka would score two of his own to tie the game. Kaka, Kaka hits it, four down. What a finish. And now that Kaka had the momentum, it was all over for Xavi and Kaka would go on to score three more goals to eliminate Messi's last match. Oh my days, it's a sad day for Messi fans everywhere. No, that was the final person on Team Messi. Now it's just a matter of time that Messi, it, it was bound to happen, man. It was bound to happen. Now that Kaka beat Xavi, it's the end of the road for Messi. And the only way Messi can win FIFA Imperialism is that if he beats everyone else left on the map, but for Team Ronaldo, anyone on their team just has to beat Messi once and Ronaldo will get crowned the winner. And it looks like Kaka is stepping up one more time. Can he beat Messi and successfully crown Ronaldo as the GOAT? And if you made it this far in the video, please subscribe because we're trying to get to 1 million subscribers. Thank you. To start the match off, Messi came in hot, but he just couldn't get past Kaka's goalkeeper. Oh my days, that's horrible. But on the other side of the pitch, Kaka was far more clinical with his chances. Oh no. Oh no, Emmy Martinez, what are you doing? But it's all good because Messi would get a huge breakaway opportunity. Oh, great defense from Messi. Now he's gone. Oh, he has to finish this though. He has to finish this. Oh, that's pathetic, man. Messi should have scored that goal because Kaka went and scored two more of his own, successfully winning the match and crowning Ronaldo the official GOAT. And that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is all over. Ronaldo is officially the GOAT. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, you're going to love this video down below as well. Click it and watch it next.